Hi, my name is Claudette. I am a seasoned uh, senior here from the uh, city of Detroit, and uh, I live very close to the public library main branch on Woodward and Kirby, and I really have an extreme fondness for reading. I began reading preschool, although it was interesting, uh, when I got to kindergarten, my teacher, Miss Bojack, from the, uh, what is it, Hart, Harris Hart Elementary School on the east side, uh, on Mack Avenue, she told my parents that um, I had a reading issue, even though I was reading uh, prior to going to kindergarten, and she wanted me to repeat the class. And my mom and dad said, okay, we'll do that for reinforcement. And so that's what happened. I ended up taking reading uh, twice, or first grade twice. And as the Lord would have it, I ended up being double promoted in the fifth grade. So then I caught up chronologically with my peers. But um, reading is really the crux of your life. If you're not able to read, then you're not going to really enjoy all the aspects of life. Uh, even in terms of just watching something, uh, oftentimes now you have the captions that are underneath. And if you're not able to be a speed reader to really go through that, that uh, diminishes some of your um, enhancement and your enrichment of what you're actually watching. So reading is the crux of your life. So please, please, uh, if you get a chance, whatever, uh, make use of your time and select lots and lots of books to read because it's just such a, a beautiful venue to expose yourself, especially uh, not only ideas, but uh, destinations, faraway places. And you become really, really enthralled with the idea that, yes, wow, that goes beyond me. I was just startled uh, as I was um, maturing, uh, just maybe 15, 20 years ago, in conversation with adults who said that uh, in their younger days, they had never, ever gone to Belle Isle, nor had they gone to Canada. And I thought, oh my gosh. So they never had that opportunity, even as adults. Uh, and they, maybe seniors, then they started going to Belle Isle and to uh, Canada. And I thought, oh my goodness. And here, uh, the Lord has blessed me. I've been able to travel all over the world. What an opportunity. So just get out, step out, and really in, go to your library and just become exposed and enthralled with all of the different books. Whatever your interest might be, the librarian is there to assist you and guide you. And it's just a fun, fun, fun experience. So please become a good reader, a voracious reader. Take care. Hi, my name is Claudette, and this is the book that we'll be sharing. It's Aesop's Fables, not all of them, just a few of them, and the author, illustrator, Jerry Pinkney. The author is Aesop, and the illustrator is uh, Jerry Pinkney. He's so colorful. Look at how colorful this fox is, and you see the grasshopper, and the mice hovering around, and the frog, and I've forgotten who these little, I think they're ants, enlarged ants. They're always quite industrious. I don't know if you're able to see it. One of my favorites is the maid. The paint I should have highlighted for a particular page. <laughs> but they're so colorful. Yes, very colorful. Yes, the milkmaid and her pail. <clears throat> so she's got a lovely orange uh, pinafore dress accessorized with a blue-greenish uh, shawl type situation. But notice on her head, she has a wooden pail. And I don't know if you're able to detect that, but it looks like there's milk about to be splattered. It's very, I don't know, but uh, you, it kind of merges in with the sky, but there's a little bit of milk there. But the whole pail is filled with milk. It's a delightful book. It's entitled, The Milkmaid and Her Pail. A milkmaid was walking down the road balancing on her head a bucket full of fresh, sweet milk. And as she walked, she was busy daydreaming. Now, she knows she had to be daydreaming because look at her head. She's turning the opposite direction from the way she's walking. So she's a bit detracted. So we've got to be mindful of how we walk and where we walk. Milk, this rich, she thought, will surely give plenty of cream. I'll churn the cream into fresh white butter, and I'll take the butter to market. After I sell it, 
buy a dozen eggs and soon I'll have a dozen chickens running around the yard. I'll sell the chickens for a good price and with the money I'll buy myself a new dress, the green one with lace, to wear to the fair in the summer. And when the miller's son sees me in that dress, he'll beg to dance with me. But will I let him? Never. When he asks me, I'll just toss my head like this. And imagine when she tosses her head, what's gonna happen? The milk is gonna come tumbling over. Yes. As the milkmaid tossed her head in scorn, her wooden bucket fell to the ground and split in two. And so the milkmaid had nothing, no dress, no chickens, no eggs, no butter, not even the milk she had to start with. Oh my, all of that gone to the ground. Imagine losing it, everything, losing it all. Moral of this story, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. So some things you need to keep quiet and just have with you, and if you're a believer, with the Lord. So, moral of the story, don't count those chickens before they're hatched. Be mindful. Thank you for listening. Thank you.